This, this, this is a homage beat. I don't think we're contributing to this large um, problem. I say the problem isn't garbage. The problem is humans who create garbage. As long as humans are present, there will always be garbage. The solution is that humans must take personal responsibility. You know, it makes common sense to do this, but yeah. no one does this. And I said, and again, just just making the point that we clearly see garbage isn't the problem, but what humans are the problems with the trash. In fact, I say garbage teaches a profound truth. There's certain characteristics about garbage. Now, this may seem like a crazy question, but what do we usually classify as garbage? If you had to say these are the characteristics of what garbage is, what would you say those characteristics are? Honestly, it's something that you don't have any use for anymore. Okay, useless, or worthless. You don't need it. Okay. I mean, you may, um, a lot of times, something you don't want or mm -hmm. care about. Um, it's the old model. Yeah. Um, about something like rotten. Yeah, dead, yeah. stinks. Rotten, dead. Old. Mm -hmm. you got something in the refrigerator that stinks because you wasted it. Mm -hmm. You didn't take your, you, you bought it. But you didn't really make an effort to eat it before it expired. Get it out. It stinks. Stinking mm -hmm. up the house. You yeah. know what I mean? You do that? I did want to ask you a question, though, as you made that. Um, and you were talking about um, one of the part we were talking about the naturalistic worldview. Yeah. And you were talking about, like, how the earth provides all these resources. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you do you have a, a viewpoint on, like, someone that may live, like, if a person lives a life where they choose to just kind of live off the land, yeah, I watched the show um, Naked and Afraid before, and like for like twenty one days, yeah, they're just straight living off the land. Mm -hmm. If a person tries to live that way, would that be like a would that be would would they be still part of this problem, or is that could could that be like some type of solution? That people, yeah, I think I think that's the question. I think that's the point. I think that's how it was supposed to be. Okay. that we were supposed to um, live right. off of the land. Because if you see, there's this growing movement to, you know, whether it's to go vegan or okay, to stop style. eating a yeah. whole bunch of processed food, to eat more organic stuff. Yeah. Um, you see people going back to it because it's more healthier, but that's how it's supposed to be from sort the beginning. Right. You know, a lot of the man-made stuff for you, and again, I'm guilty of this. My mom, like, <laughs> uh, she would get on me because I get um, all, um, apples for autumn, but I don't get the ones where you gotta cut up. I get the ones that are already pre-cut. And she's like, you know they already process all of that? And I'm like, I don't feel like cutting no apples. They but, are processed? Yeah, they process it. Yeah, cause I don't know. My mom is like, they, they process it for so it can stay longer, but it's just mm. convenience for me. I you know, I don't want to have to cut. And my wife, she's like, you know, we have an apple cutter. <laughs> These apples, and not only do they come cut up for you, they skin them for you. Autumn don't like the skins. So I just give them to it, and she Bro, eat it. Just... She got a little one-year-old. You got to feed it quick. I, mean, hey. I respect hey. it. But I'm a man. I'm speaking <laughs> from a man's point of view. We had kids, whatever. Exactly. And so I get where my mom is coming from. And again, it's like... <laughs> I could be buying just the, I guess, the fresher apples. I don't know if they're more fresh than the other ones or whatever the case is. I don't know. Um, but, but yeah, I think that was the intent for us to live off the land. It's a lot healthier because a yeah. lot of you talking about getting food. But I'm sure, and again, all guilty of this, getting fast food, getting food <laughs> that has a lot of grease. Yeah. You know, these things that are not healthy for us, even though they're coming from animals, they're processed. Yeah. You know. Um, and they have a lot of chemicals that do us harm. So if we're just eating or just going based off of the land, I think the land would be a lot better, It'd be less pollution. And like I said, I think food is just one aspect. You were talking about like um, cars, because I didn't get into that um, with this one, um, but I do talk about pollution. And then we talk about, like I know California and like, uh, I want to say, Japan, uh, China, or one of those places where the pollution is really huge, yeah. and they're trying to look for alternative means for fueling cars and stuff yeah. like that, whether it be solar or electric or mm -hmm. things like that. Where, and I don't want to say everything man-made is bad. I don't want to go down that route, 
but a lot of the things that are man-made are not necessarily good for the environment or you know just looking at um like the rainforest and things that get cut down so that we can construct these buildings and things like that where we're kind of disrupting you know the ecosystem and things like that for um for our own purposes and our own gain our own benefit yeah um, but i think just for this one i was just mainly focusing on um garbage but i would agree that um, is it, I don't know, because there's two different ones. Is that the one with Bear Grills or whatever his name is? Or is that a different one? The um, the the show that you was talking about. I don't even know the person. You talking to the host of it? Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. Uh, okay. But I, I just I like, it was one night, man, Chanel just watching some random stuff. And mm-hmm. I only saw some people who like, yeah. running around like, I'm like, Yo, what are they doing? <laughs> like, bro, it's not that serious. But I mean, I'm making fun of them, but I'm like... I'm the one sitting on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when they, that's really how we supposed to be. Yeah, like, that's how we started out is what yeah. they're doing. But we think it's silly because we're so used to our comfort. Mm-hmm. Being here. Yeah. Making trash. Mm-hmm. Creating things. Open up chips. Open yeah. up stuff that's going to just create. And you never think about it till you, yeah, you read know. some research like this. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, getting back to the characteristics of of garbage, and you had listed ones that I had come, you may have used different synonyms, but I said, I just gave three characteristics of garbage. Um, I said, garbage is worthless, garbage is vile, and um, garbage is dead. I say, if nothing no longer um, works, we throw it away. If food goes bad and starts to smell, we throw it away. If something dies, we throw it away. And I say this. I say, tragically, these are the same attributes the Bible uses to describe all of mankind. Um, And for me, this was, I I wouldn't say it was a difficult truth to grasp, um, but I know for a lot of people it is. And and I'm I'm sure I've told you and told those listening my kind of background, my story, like I've never smoked, never drank, never. On paper, I look like a good person. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I heard the truth of the gospel and I understood that God was a holy God, and that any sin that I committed against the Holy God was worthy of death. And I understood that it wasn't just a oops. It wasn't just a mistake. Um, so my question to you, was this a difficult truth to understand, like a true understanding of who man is? And the reason I ask that is because so many people think well of themselves. And without, I guess, giving you the punchline, Scripture says otherwise. Essentially, Scripture describes man as evil. And yeah. how do you reconcile that um, with a lot of what we've taught, is that something that you wrestle with or something that you've come to grasp? Um, this reality that, and we spoke about it before, even when we was doing the one on Victoria, uh, what does it mean to be victorious? Yeah. We're not the good guys, we're the villains, we're the evil ones, yeah. you know? Um, how, has that been something, uh, that truth to been difficult pill to swallow? Yeah, man. It's, it's a tough pill to swallow, it's convicting. Um, you really don't understand the weight of sin until you sit there and you really dig into it and you see that what God and then it it hits you that God really sees me this way Mm -hmm. like it's like so it lets you so much you you become so much more cognizant of the fact that you do need a savior as we're going to get into Mm -hmm. I know later but I mean it's a heavy it's a a heavy understanding like it's, it's tough like when I read it I was like cool um but that's hard to it's yeah. a hard pill to swallow just to be like, okay, how do I look at myself when the, when I look go around and people, and I'm always told and we tell each other how incredible and beautiful and wonderful and we prop ourselves up so much but mm-hmm. and not realize that we are yeah. vile and disgusting and and we're worthless. Like like you were saying in the, in the I know it's different ways to look at those yeah, words, yeah. like different mm-hmm. ways they're being used. Mm-hmm. But those are heavy words. Like, if you go up to a person just randomly and use those words, it's going to hurt them. Yeah, yeah. Hurt their feelings. So. No, and that's real. And I think um, making that important distinction between, because you've got, like, um, you've got the fire and brimstone type of people who just say, you're evil, you're sinful, you're going to hell. And then you've got the people on the other side of the spectrum that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And it's like we have to have the full counsel of God. Yeah, um, and the full counsel of God is harmonizing both of those truths. And I, I do want to make sure that we're emphasizing that people do have worth. And that's what I was going to get into, too. But your worth is attached to God. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think there's a verse um, in the gospel that says... Um, 
without Christ you are nothing or something to that effect that mm -hmm. the only reason you do have any worth that you are an incredible uh, precious person is what because of God yeah. and again going back to the image of God any worth any value that you have is from God because he has given it to you if you right. don't come from that then, mm -hmm. then this is the truth because I say this and I and again when I gave these um, these uh, characteristics I made sure that I went to scripture um, I say and this is Romans 312 it says all have turned aside together they have become what worthless mm -hmm. now uh, no not uh, no one does good not even one these are not the words of Brandon these are the words of scripture we have become what worthless and I say when the Bible refers to men becoming worthless it's not in relation to their what value yeah. but in regards to their purpose yeah. for example the purpose of a battery is to power some type of device if the battery no longer works it's thrown out in regards to man's purpose and again just see how scripture just complements itself uh, the Bible says man was created to what keep the land that God had created. Uh -huh. This is typically understood as what? Stewardship. God created the earth and gave man the task of working and creating it. I say it would appear that man has failed miserably. Man does not work to maintain the land that sustains him. Rather, man neglects and disrespects the land that sustains him. Again, this is, you don't have to come to, from a biblical worldview to recognize this. Yeah. Like, again, and I don't mean to keep calling them the tree huggers, but the people who are like, yo, we should be taking care of the earth. Why aren't Christians the most loud when it comes to that? You know, why are these people who a lot of them, and again, I don't want to overgeneralize, may not even come from a biblical worldview, acknowledge, hey, we need to take care of the earth. Well, we look at these people as these crazy hippie people, but it's like, no, we do need to be taking care of the earth. Yeah, and that more, message man. should be coming, what, from believers. That we've been given stewardship of the earth, but we don't take care of it. And that's just one one uh, reason how what this is. And this is Genesis, where God has given us our purpose yeah. to take care of the earth. We don't do that, yeah. you know. Um, and then I go and <laughs> say, this is three things. And like I said, there's other characteristics, but I say worthless. So I drew worthless from Romans 3.12. And then I talk about vile, you know. And that's another yeah. one where it's like, ugh, it's kind of tough one to, to deal with. But I, and again... I'm giving you scripture. These are not the words of Brandon. These are the words of scripture. Job 15, 15, um, and 16. I say, behold, God puts no trust in his holy ones, and even the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less is man who is what? Vile and corrupt. Mm -hmm. A man who drinks injustice like water. I say, scripture does not appear to hold man in high regard. Excuse me. But it tells the awful truth about men. Men are vile and corrupt. Yeah. Another synonym is evil. It is despicable to neglect and disrespect that which sustains you. The Creator designed the earth in such a way that it allows you to live. From the earth you get what? Food, water, oxygen. Nature provides everything that's essential to live. The natural response would be to maintain and respect nature. Though some recognize this truth, others don't. Even those who do respect and maintain the earth have not done so perfectly. Man at his core is what? Vile. Yeah. It, and in a sense, um, and is seen in the way that he neglects and disrespects nature. Men love to think well of themselves, but their garbage testifies against them. And it's like spiritually men are rotten and the way they manage garbage highlights this. Men are literally destroying the planet that sustains them. Their greed, carelessness, and apathy are the fruits of a vile and rotten heart. So here I've given you what biblical context for what men are worthless. Same characteristics we used to describe trash. Say men are vile. Uh, Job 15, 15 through 16. Again, that's a, that's a tough one, but this next one is even tougher. I say, this is Ephesians 2, 1. Scripture says you were what dead in your trespasses and sins. Men may not, men may be physically alive, but spiritually he is dead. The idea of being communicated is that men are so immersed in their filth that they in their sin that they don't even realize it. The spiritual truth plays out in a physical reality. The prime example is how we deal with our trash.